What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel, the number one place for new coaches, content creators, and entrepreneurs. In today's video, I really wanted to break down the top rookie mistakes that I see a lot of new YouTubers making. Now, in my previous video here on my channel, I did in fact share with you my top 10 tips on how exactly I went from zero to 100,000 subscribers in just one year alone. So make sure you're checking out this video as well so that you get the full scope of all the things that I recommend you doing in order to optimize your channel. With that being said though, in this video specifically, I will be breaking down some key mistakes that are actually quite easy to fix. So if you're interested in learning how you can optimize your YouTube channel and get those really quick wins, then keep on watching. All right guys, the first mistake that I see a lot of new YouTubers making is that they are not front loading their video titles with their main keywords. Now we all know that the title of your video matters. It's the one thing that people are really reading to make sure that this video is right for them and why they would want to watch that video in the first place. However, what people don't know about is that where you actually place your keywords within your title also matters as well. Let me explain. Now, here on my channel, I have a video all about how to go viral on YouTube as a small channel. Now, this title is awesome and all. However, if you actually go on mobile, you'll see that half of the title actually gets cut out and all you see is how to go viral on YouTube. Now, this is obviously awesome for me because regardless if someone is browsing my videos on desktop or on mobile, at least the key point is shared. You can obviously tell that this video is about how to go viral on YouTube. On the flip side though, if the title instead was how a small channel on YouTube can go viral, then what's gonna happen is on mobile, all you'll probably be able to see is how a small channel on YouTube. Now the issue with this is that if someone is browsing my videos on YouTube, they're probably not gonna click that video because it doesn't really say it's all about going viral. All it says is how a small channel on YouTube. It's probably not as attractive to that person and therefore it's gonna affect my click-through rate. So as you can see, when you are developing the titles of your video, make sure that the key point or the thing that you want to make Make sure people know about in terms of what your video is all about is going to be in the front of that title rather than near the end because on mobile it's definitely going to get cut out and if your title is too long even on desktop it'll get cut out as well now moving on to the next rookie mistake that I see is that people are often using really generic keywords for instance when you are optimizing your video and you're using keywords like entrepreneur makeup tutorial female influencer youtuber you're probably not going to rank in search at all. That's why when you are doing your keywords, really ask yourself, what is someone typing in the search bar in order for them to find my video? And what keywords can I use that aren't as competitive? Like I mentioned in this video right here, you can obviously use third party apps like TubeBuddy or vidIQ, which by the way, links are in the description box below if you want to download these apps. But basically you can use these apps in order to determine how your keywords are actually ranking. Now, in order for me to truly explain this to you, let me just share my screen. Hey guys, so right now, as you can see, I have the plugin called vidIQ and I've also got a plugin called TubeBuddy, meaning that when I actually search something in the search bar, I'm able to actually extract a lot more information. For example, 100K subscribers in one year. Let's say that's the search term that I want to target. I'm able to see with vidIQ who's the top creator, all the stats that are related to this term. I can also see the keyword score as per vidIQ's perspective and also the top keywords used. Not only only this, if I use TubeBuddy, obviously it shows a little bit of a different score just because TubeBuddy and vidIQ are made by two different creators. I personally like to use TubeBuddy a little bit more than I like to use vidIQ, but I do like the interface of vidIQ a lot better. So that's why I have both of them, just so I have all the data that I need. Now, if you actually look at a video, for example, one that I have right here with TubeBuddy, you're able to see some of the best practices that I've done on this video. You can also see this on your competitors' videos as well. And then for the tags, you can also see where these keywords have ranked. It's really helpful when you're looking at other people's tags or if you're just looking at yourselves. On the flip side with vidIQ, it also shares similar information, but it also kind of gives me a little bit more. For example, my engagement rate levels, my SEO score, a video optimization checklist, which I find really helpful. And then also the same thing with the keywords. So whichever plugin you choose, it will do the job. Just make sure to go to my description box in order to figure out how to download 
download these two plugins. And yeah, if you were to ask me which one I recommend more, I just would recommend downloading both of them. It doesn't really hurt. Now moving on to the third rookie mistake that I see, and that is having a very long intro. Now I've already mentioned this mistake in this video right here, but basically a key mistake that I see a lot of new YouTubers making is that they're spending way too much time on the intro and not enough time actually jumping into the meat of the video. For example, what you'll notice in my channel, typically I spend about 30 seconds in actually explaining to you guys what this video is about, and then I immediately jump into what the context is. Now, what I've noticed from audience feedback is that a lot of people appreciate this. Not only this, there is no point in spending time asking people to subscribe to your channel, to hit the like button, all these things in the beginning, because if people like your videos, they will do that anyways. Not only this, from an audience retention standpoint, what I noticed when I was looking at my analytics, I saw that when I had a longer intro, people would actually click out of the video. This is really evident in this screenshot right here. And again, I also mentioned this in this video and also I believe this video as well. So if you wanna learn more about how you can increase your watch time, whether it's through scripting or through other means, make sure you check these two videos out as well. But basically, all in all, having a longer intro can actually hurt your analytics, can actually hurt your audience retention. So make sure you're being mindful of this when you are filming your videos. Now, the next rookie mistake that I wanna share with you is not actually rookie at all, and I see a lot of pro YouTubers making this mistake as well. And that is hinting to your audience that the video is over. Now, this tip is also featured in this video right here where I really go in depth on how you should be scripting your videos, or at least how I script my videos that really help my channel grow. But basically, when you are doing your videos, and let's say you're walking your audience through a series of tips, just like this video right here, if you are telling your audience this is the last tip, or that's it for this video, or you're saying words that are really telling your audience that the video is basically over, what I found through my analytics is that people will actually click out. So if you have something more to say near the end, for example, an announcement or anything else, you definitely don't want your audience to be clicking out before that. So make sure you're not using words like, that's it guys, or that's the last tip that I have, or my last tip is, then people will actually not know that the video is truly ending. And if people, do not know that the video is ending, then the chances and the likelihood of them sticking around until the end is going to be increased. And not only is that going to help your watch time, but all the information that you wanna share near the end is actually going to be listened to and retained by your audience. Moving on to the next rookie mistake that I see a lot of new YouTubers making, and that is not leveraging the pinned comments feature. What you'll notice here on my channel is that I'm always pinning my own comments and I'm putting relevant links in that pinned comment. I see a lot of people only putting their links in their description box, which is fine, and I do that as well. However, what I found is that having it in your comment section pinned at the top is actually gonna increase the click rates of those links that you want to share. So for example, if you have an affiliate link, if you have your own links, if you have a partner link, make sure that you're not just putting it in your description box, but you're also putting it in your pinned comments as well. I found that all of my lead magnets definitely have higher click-through rates just because because I put it in the comment section and your audience is more likely to look at the comment section than they are the description box. So just make sure you keep that in mind if you have important links to share. Moving on to the next mistake that I see a lot of new YouTubers making and that is wrong thumbnail text placements. Now using my own channel as an example, you'll see that on my thumbnails I have text. However, for me, I only put my text on the left hand side and if I ever put it on the right hand side, it's usually near the top part more than the bottom. And there's a reason for this. If you actually look at YouTube's thumbnails, a lot of the YouTube icons are gonna be on the bottom right-hand side. Meaning, if you're putting text on the right side or you're putting it too low, guess what? It's gonna be hidden by YouTube's icons. That's why if you wanna make sure that people can actually read the text on your thumbnails, which by the way, thumbnails are one of the most important things to optimize on your YouTube channel because that's what people are really visually looking at when they're deciding what video to watch, make sure that you are avoiding those areas where YouTube's icons are. Now moving on to the next rookie mistake that I see a lot of new YouTubers making is sharing your videos with the wrong people. Now you guys must be shook, you guys obviously want to share your videos with everyone, but I'm going to tell you right now that if you share your videos with the wrong people who aren't exactly in your target audience, it is going to damage your watch time. For example, I see a lot of YouTube promo groups on the internet, specifically on Facebook, and there's a lot of people that just share their links and drop them everywhere.
there. However, yes, you might get views, you might get clicks, but it is going to hurt your watch time because most likely these people aren't watching your videos until the end. If anything, they're probably only watching 10 seconds of it and then clicking out. So make sure that you are preserving your watch time because here on YouTube, watch time is king. Not your views, not your subscriber rate, but your actual watch time. If people are watching more of your video, it shows to YouTube that you have a quality piece of content and therefore it's gonna push your videos higher up in the algorithm. However, if your watch time is crap and people are only watching 30 seconds of your video, then YouTube is more likely to push it down the algorithm because it's showing to them that your content isn't that great. So make sure when you're dropping your links that you're actually sharing it with people that would genuinely watch your video. Now, speaking of preserving that watch time and making sure that your videos are entertaining enough for people to watch until the end, a pro tip that I have for you is to have good video editing. And a mistake that I made here on my channel is I spent a lot of my time editing my videos, even when I technically could afford hiring a video editor. That's why if you are someone who's at a place where you're thinking of hiring a video editor, I definitely want you to hit that notification bell because in my next video, I'm gonna talk all about what it's like to hire a video editor and some tips and tricks that I have to make sure that you don't get burned. That's why if you are interested in learning all about how to hire your very first video editor and my tips in order for you to have a good relationship with that video editor, then make sure you hit that notification bell. In the meantime, while you wait for that video, make sure that you're also checking out these two videos that I have right here. I talk a lot about social media, entrepreneurship, and coaching, so make sure you check out those videos as well. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I appreciate you, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye, guys.